Fascinating. Randy Johnson back in his starter's role against the Yankees. You may recall last time he faced New York, he was doing some ninth inning relief work, picking up a win in Game 7 of the World Series. Johnson threw 229 pitches in the series last fall, but none of them at Yankee Stadium. Johnson getting our night of no hitters started 1990 with the Mariners bottom third Marcus Timms just called up from Columbus in the very first pitch he saw as a big leaguer he is just driven out of the stadium 17th player to do that so he had goosebumps all over guy was hitting 216 in Columbus get that one back you know not happy and then he took a curtain call he said Mr. Torrey pushed me out oh, Two run on. shot top four Steve Finley facing Sterling Hitchcock That'll get down. Hitchcock 0 8 all time against the D backs. Greg Colburn will score. Yorubio Barraza will score. It's tied at two, and Hitchcock, none too pleased about that. Top five runners on the corners. Hitchcock, going to go after the former driller, Junior Spy. We got him in a rundown, but Craig Council's over there trying to get home, and now he's in the hot box. Jorge Posada chases him down, doesn't get the tag. Council going the other way. He looks like Jackie Robinson. And the swipe tag by Hitchcock. Did he get him? Ump says, yay. Council disagrees, but if the ump says you're out, you're out. Bottom five, Derek Jeter is dreaming. He has just hit the 100th home run of the Yanks season, just 64 games, and it comes in Jeter's 1,000th career game. The Yanks down just 4-3 now. A couple of batters later, O2 count on Jorge Posada. Well, that'll end your fifth. The unit's pump. Eight Ks in the game for Randy Johnson. Top eight, D-backs lead 4-3. Mike Stanton gets him in a bases loaded jam with nobody out. Gets the first, and then... Gets Steve Finley. He's gone. Next batter is Damian Miller. Damian Miller, he's from Wisconsin. I'm living in Connecticut. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Randy Johnson pulled in favor of the bullpen. Shane Spencer facing Brett Prince. After an intentional walk, we got 2-0, 3-0, 3-1, and then the next pitch, 3-1. Spencer swings at ball four. You know it's ball four because the fan says, you lose I fall fall. You know what? Maybe he just wanted, a word. Maybe he wanted another <laughs> pitch. Look at that. Got to have the money ball. Spencer, the grand slam. 4-3 deficit just like that. A 7-4 lead. Yanks dug out his pleas. They're on their way to a win. And Brett Prince goes, Randy Johnson's going to kill me. Or at least shove me in a locker. Spencer's fourth career slam. First, though, since he hit the previous three in the 98 season. Yanks, 100 homers in 64 games. That breaks the team record. Six games better than the 61 stripes. Tim's fifth guy to make his major league debut against Johnson. The first guy just to get a hit. He joins John Miller as only players to ever homer in their first major league at bat for the Yankees. Miller never homered again, so kind of sorry to offer that up for poor Marcus. Afterwards, Tim's got the treatment on baseball tonight. Duck. My stomach was a little nervous before the game started. Everybody was telling me about him, and I didn't get too much sleep last night. <laughs> I came in today, and they told me I was playing right field and hitting ninth. I was like, okay, let's go, and all the guys were giving me crap about being nervous my first time up here, and I was, and after that first, first pitch, first at bat, everything else was the same. Electric Shaven. Johnson falls to 6 and 8 with a 4.23 ERA in his regular season career against the Yanks. But on the other hand, Big Union owns the best career record against the Yanks in postseason history, going 5 and 0, an ERA of less than 2 and 5 appearances, three of those starts, three of the wins last fall. Eric Milton into the windup and the pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. A no hit, no run game for Eric Milton being mobbed by the Twins. Monday night, Eric Milton facing the Braves in the Braves' first visit to the Metrodome since the 91 World Series. Milton, yeah, gets Rafael for Cal. He went 70, allowed six hits and five runs, did Milton. Henry Blanco makes a bad throw. Matt LaCroix would score. Torrey Hunter was stealing second at the time. Twins were up 4-0 on the Braves. Top of the fifth, 5-1 Twins, Blanco. His only hit of the game, he was one for six. Andrew Jones would score. Braves cut the lead 5-2. Same score in the sixth. The Twins already got to Greg Maddox. Chipper Jones for the love of elevation, a two-run home run, his seventh of the year, and his first in 103 at-bats. Chipper three for five, two RBI. Christian Guzman in the bottom of the 15th, extra innings. 
Guzman off a of Kerry Leitenberg off the wall. Tom Prince heads home, and Tom Prince will be a king because he beats the throw. And the Twins win. Leitenberg had gone 11 straight appearances without allowing an earned run. Now, dating back to Game 6 and 7 of the 91 World Series, each of the last three games between these two teams have gone extras. All three won by the Twins in Minnesota. And I told you the Twins got to Greg Maddox big time. He led a five earned runs in the first. The fourth time that's happened to Mad Dog in his career. Ground ball. A season later, Bud Smith is still looking for his first win. Called up from Triple A just last week. And Cards visiting Seattle. Man on first and second, Charles Gibson. Gibson, that's good contact. Dan Wilson and Dizzy Relaford would score on that. 3 0 Seattle on the Gibson. Two RBI triple. It was 4 0. Bottom of the six. Men on the corners for each euro. Pitchers still can't figure out each euro. Ask Luther Hackman, each euro. Three for five, two RBI. J.D. Drew and Relaford would score to make it five nothing. Top seven, men on second and third for Mike D. Felice. J.D. Moyer, five hits allowed in nine innings. Bottom seven, Brett Boone. On the ground, in the hole, Edgar Renteria. Great diving stop. The man still has the skills. Top of the ninth, Moyer looking for the complete game shutout. Facing Perez, and Perez gets the bat on it, but that's to short, and uh, Relaford will feel that and throw the first for the out. Moyer does get that complete game shutout, and the Mariners all over the Cardinals, 10 to nothing. For Moyer, his seventh career shutout, first since 1998. John Olrud went one for five, extending his hit streak to 12 games. Bud Smith, by the way, falling to 0 and 4 with an 8.74 ERA on the season. He gets the sign from Veritek. He winds the right arm around in the pitch. Swing it a ground ball, bounce to second. Sanchez has it to Wasserman, and Derek Lowe has pitched the no hitter. He pumps his fist, is being mopped by his teammates near the first baseline. And Derek Lowe has pitched the first no hitter. Park since 1965. Rockies Red Sox, Derek Lowe just six weeks removed from his no-hitter. Manny Ramirez taking a few cuts, getting ready to return soon. Who's throwing out the first pitch? Matt Damon and Johnny Damon. How about that? Tuesday it'll be Petula Clark throwing to Tony Clark, perhaps. Bottom four, Red Sox up 2-0, two, two outs, Johnny Damon. Grounds to third, Todd Zeal. Got it. Nobody there at second. Everybody safe. Trot Nixon scores. 3-0 Boston. Take another look. Zeal, he's got it. It's just Jose Ortiz just temporarily forgets the bag is to the right of him, which is where it usually is if you're a second baseman. Let's go top five. Derek Lowe facing Bobby Estalea. Estalea deep. Monster shot. His seventh of the year. The first homer. Lowe is allowed in 108 innings. A streak gone. Boston's lead down to 3-1. Lowe still had some success in the game. Larry Walker done. Sox win it by a count of 7-3 low, six innings pitch. Despite allowing a season-high eight hits, he becomes Yale's first 10-game winner and snuffs out a Red Sox season-worst three-game losing streak. Low, three for three this year after a Boston loss. It's the bottom of the ninth inning. That's the story. No runs, no hits for the Orioles. 21-year-old rookie southpaw Wilson Alvarez. Yes! Left in the air to left, O'Leary coming on, and Hideo Nomo is no hit the Baltimore Orioles. Dodgers, Delroy is featuring a pair of no-hit pitchers. Nomo's actually got two of one, and he was a Dodger. Here he's getting some help. Look, Cesar is tourist, robbing Aubrey Hall. Oh, they'll call that a web gems over on the other program. Top fifth, Wilson Alvarez and Willie. Sean Green and Sean Green obviously mistakes Alvarez for a Milwaukee Brewers pitcher. Drives that out for his 15th. It's 7-0 in favor of L.A. Bottom five, eight, one. Randy Wynn was three for five in the game, and it took good plays to get him out the other two times. Adrian Beltre making the stop and the throw. Dodgers win a 10-5 and almost four straight win. Dodgers now just a game back of Arizona. Paul LaDuca drove in two, hit his first career triple in 852 at-bats. Who says catchers are slow? L.A. averaging better than six runs per over the last 23 games. Fly ball, left field. Alex Cole coming in. Mears going out. Cole has it. Erickson has his no-hitter. Monday night, Scott Erickson was looking for his first win since April 28th, hosting the Padres. Hey, Tommy, how are you? 
I thought so. Bottom of the second, Orioles down 3 0. Oh, boy. Melvin Mora. Oh, Melvin, two for four. He's hitting 246. That'll bring on in a few people. Jay Gibbons, Marty Cordova, and Mike Bordick to tie up this game at three. It was a tie game at six, bottom of the eighth, when this happened. The man named Melvin. He's not scared of heights. Off of Jerry Hairston Jr., a two run home run. Helping the Orioles win 8-6, Moore's eighth home run of the year. Melvin Moore, career high, five RBI. Say hi, wave to the crowd. Scott Erickson settles for the no decision despite leaving the game with a 6-4 lead after five and a third. San Diego pitchers couldn't find the plate for Bonds when he hit it in the restaurant at Sky Dome. Esteban Loiza's pitch just misses there, ball four. Bottom three, three, one, Giants, one on, Raul Mondesi. He's built for this. A two-run home run, his 13th of the year. We're tied at three. Now, fans of the Jays want to see Bonds swing away, and why not? <laughs> see? Tie game. Bonds hits one deep, but it's not going to be deep enough. Bonds was 0 for 2 at this point. Top of the ninth, 6-5 Toronto. One on, one out. Bonds against Kelvin Escobar. Escobar looking for his 13th save and 17 chances. And does just that. Bonds 0 for 4 with a walk. You know, why give Barry Bonds anything to hit? You see who's hitting behind him? Jeff Kent, Benito Santiago combining to go 0 for 8 in this game. That's five straight wins, 10 of their last 11 for Toronto. And the Giants, they mustered just two hits off of four Toronto relievers. By the way, when Bonds was asked by reporters to comment on Roger Clemens on the day after being hit by him, Barry said, quote, it's really none of your business how I really feel. Mets, fresh off of taking two or three in Cleveland, moved on to a jammed house in Chicago. Oh, yeah, there was lightning issues, rain, power, a delay. First batter of the game in the first, Timo Perez. Hitting over 300. They were just running away. This off of Gary Glover, but Aaron Rowland, what a great catch. Talk about web gems. Later in the inning, lightning strikes the stadium. That causes a power outage. Why does it seem like the Mets are always involved in power outages, John? This I don't know. Oh, but there's Roberto Alomar. He's back picking up of late. Just ask Gary Glover. His fifth home run of the year. One to nothing Mets. 3-1 Mets, bottom seven, one on. Aaron Rowan. He made that great catch. This is a blooper. It's going to hit off Robbie Alomar's glove. Jeremy Bernitz to second. And Ray Ordonez with a great stretch. Great play on both ends. They can play defense. Mets win 3-1. to one. Sure, they lead the Major League in errors, but that was nice. Pedro Estazio, 7-2 after working seven innings in the Met victory. Armando Benitez worked the ninth for save number 14. Roger Clemens, a man of his word, hinted he would ding Barry Bonds in that big elbow brace of his and then did on Sunday. BB and the gents and too happy about it. Major League Baseball says they're investigating to see if it was truly a premeditated beaning and if punishing Clemens is warranted. Games will have to go two weeks without the closer. Mariano Rivera placed on the 15-day DL Monday with a strained right groin. Just the second time in his eight-year career he has been shelled by injury. Dodgers DL pitcher Kevin Brown is going to undergo lower back surgery in L.A. on Tuesday to repair a disc problem. Team says it'll be three or four days before they know Brown's status about playing again. Pedro Martinez complained he was a little sore after his last start, experiencing a pinching sensation in his shoulder. Red Sox team doctor thinks it's probably a little joint inflammation with no cause for alarm. For the moment, he's still on for his start on Friday. Red Rangers, Jerry Naren, last place Rangers facing the Reds. A-Rod, uh-oh, off the hand of Carlos Almanzar, making his first career start. Almanzar would stay in the game for now. Bottom of the first, Rafael Palmero facing Almanzar, two on. Palmero looking for space, finds it. Austin Kearns comes up with the throw. A-Rod, check him out, somehow avoids Jason LaRue's tag. Almanzar would leave the game with a fractured finger. He was placed on the DL. Mike Young against Scott Sullivan. You know, Scott Sullivan wasn't expected to be there, so he was not prepared for that. A two-run homer for Young. And then, as he thinks he didn't get all of it, so he slides into third. How embarrassing. And then Young finally realizes, wait a minute, did I get a homer? Marcel Brangett against Ishmael Valdez. Brangett, opposite way. A-Rod is awesome. Take another look. Obviously, yoga is paying off for Alex Rodriguez. Rangers up 8-2, bottom of the ninth. John Brocker in to close the door. Facing Austin Kearns. This to end the game. He does it. Rangers win the game. 
eight to two. Not to be forgotten in the onslaught, Mr. Mensch, Kevin Mensch, a 403-foot home run. Tough break for Almanzar, who was making his first major league start after 136 relief appearances. A-Rod had his fourth straight game without an RBI, his longest stretch since not driving in a run the first five games of this season. Hi, Beer Makers Athletics. Oakland enjoying its third four-game win streak of the season. They have yet to string together five straight, but with two out, oh boy, Jose Hernandez. That's down. Jeff Jenkins will score. Now, Matt Stairs will not ever be confused with Bullet Bob Hayes, and he's trying to give his team the lead, and he is out by a lot. So we're tied at six. Bottom eight, same numbers on the board for Ramon Hernandez. And Hernandez, decent wood on that the other way. On the right center, Terrence Long will score. Hernandez in with a double A's of 7-6. They would add one more. They call that the insurance run. Go up 8-6. Top nine, Brewers. Still around two on, two out. Ronnie Belliard grounds to second. End of game. A's win at 8-6. They've won five in a row. Brewers have lost five in a row after winning five in a row. Wondering about the Pirates in Anaheim. I thought you were a man on first. No score bottom one. Jimmy Anderson on the mound. Troy Gloss, Illmatic. His 13th home run of the year, putting the Angels up two to nothing. Top of the six, same score, Chad Hermanson off of Jared Washburn. That's deep, Darren Erstead. Do we ever get tired of that? Great catch, but I think we need to see this again. Why? Here's why. Erstead not only caught it over the shoulder, but behind his head as well. Wow. Pittsburgh down one, man on third. The pitch, Jack Wilson smokes it. Benji Gill makes the snag. Angels win it, 4-3. Expose Detroit, bottom five, tied at three, Rob Fick. Facing Javier Vasquez, Fick, no doubt. A three-run home run, he's second of the game. Nobody said he didn't have power. Tigers lead 6-3. Top of the night, I don't know what else they said about him, but two on, two out, Vladimir Guerrero, one Acevedo. Guerrero, no contest. Maybe Guerrero just wanted the game to be over because of this. It started to rain. Tigers win, 6-4. Phillies, Indians, top third. Phillies down one zip, back. runner on third. Jason Michaels, a shot back. CC Sabathia's got it, and then CC throws it away for a big E. Error on your pitcher. Jimmy Rollins will score. We're tied at one. Top five. Phillies up 2 1. Pat Burrow. Get this one hard into Double right to right field. Burrow's only hit to go with two Ks, but he's now hitting 307. Bobby Abreu scores, and the Phillies have themselves a win amid more grumbling. Between AJ and the no no. And he popped him up. He skies it on the infield. Gonzalez wants it. He's under it. Backs up. That's a no-hitter. A.J. Burnett has thrown the no-hitter. Marlins Royals. Burnett, the 203rd no-hitter in big league history. Incredibly with nine walks. He wouldn't go the route in this one, trust me. Top third, Luis Castillo. Little bingo. Extends his hitting streak to 26 games. Bottom 12th now. 6-6 six, six after nine. Fish got two in the top 12. So the Royals down by 2-8-6. And Raul Abanez. The hero on Sunday. Two-run homer here to retie it at eight. We'll go to the 14th now. Still not it up at eight. And Andy Fox, who is the neatest man in baseball. Locker immaculate. Base hit down the right field line. That's going to rattle around there in the corner. Tim Raines will score. Castillo will score. And the Fish score a touchdown in the 14th and win it by a count of 15 to eight is the final so the royals at home play a lot of baseball get nothing for it the marlins stick their head back up about 500 they are now 32 we'll get scurvy third inning houston up one nothing carrie wood drops craig biggio and when biggio gets up he would strike out next banner jeff blump up and in again hello and this time biggio's got some words hey go after me don't go after the that's just not right next batter lance berkman and that time good wood by the astros Blum would score because he walked. Double for Berkman. The Astros go up 2-0. Kerry Wood, 5-0 and 7. Starts against the Astros. He's going to lose his first game. Revenge for that 20 strikeout number. 20th home run for Berkman. Houston goes on to win it 4-2. My goodness. Honey, I shrunk Shaq.